Okay, so let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So yesterday, we'll read just the half, last half of the, uh, the last paragraph that we read, and then we'll just continue. So Jesus says, even more, uh, the, 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 the victories of creation and redemption form the long rounds. And see, this is what Jesus teaches Louisa is how to pray the rounds. What Jesus um, loves is the rounds. Now, why? Because volume 16 to volume 36, Jesus tells Louisa, you have to pray the rounds. And a lot of people say that's nice, but I've got my prayers to St. Teresa. I've got my prayers to St. Gertrude. I've got my prayer. We have prayers. We've been taught by the saints for 2,000 years. Now we're being taught by Jesus how he prayed, how his mother prayed. What did they do in those 30 years of silence? We talked a little bit about the Essenes, who were, their, their whole life was focused on the, the Messiah coming to the earth. Well, when we pray the rounds, our whole focus uh, becomes, as he says here, uh, the long rounds for the newborn of my will. These, these flights, he says, these endless strolls into the kingdom of my divine will. So our intellect, memory, and will have to be surrendered to the Lord. Okay, intellect, memory, and will. We have to begin to understand from a divine perspective. The book of heaven is the language of heaven. And with any language, we learn how to speak it. And the best way to learn how to speak a language is to be in that country, to hear what the, what the words mean. Like for example, the read, cr word critura, critura in Pol Polia, where Louise was from, uh, is different understanding than the word critia, the creature in Rome. Uh, it's not that you become a monster, but the word critia uh, in, in, in Puglia meant the baby that's fallen on the ground, it's bleeding, it's hurting. Would somebody pick up the creature, help the little creature? It's always about a baby. So when you're reading the divine will, you begin to understand when Jesus says, I look for the creature, he says, I look for the fallen one. I look for the one who is hurting. I look for the one that I can return to full uh, healing. And, and that's one of the other things, too. We, the priests all have oil of Louisa. Uh, Jesus says to Louisa in volume uh, 3, um, on her birthday, April 23rd, 1900, Jesus says to Louisa, oil will come from your body, Louisa, that will heal the Lord. And then he says, the children of the divine will, this is volume 13 now, Oil will come from them to heal the church. See, everything's going to be restored. Everything's going to be healed. Uh, it's, it's not that we have to go back to the 50s. No, we continue to walk, to learn uh, what, what, what God has asked us to look at. And for the past 60 years, uh, like I, I even said you know, to the bishops, um, Nobody teaches dogma and doctrine. You know, this is the focus of the church. And, and what Jesus is doing, when you read the book of heaven, Jesus is teaching us all about dogma and doctrine. It's the Lord's teaching. And our response is to give our prayer to the Lord, praising him and thanking him and blessing him and worshiping him and glorifying him. That's the rounds. When you pray the rounds, great things happen. When you pray the rounds, miracles happen. Why? It's not the prayers of the saints. It's the prayers of Jesus. It's the prayers of Mary. It's the prayers that Adam prayed before the fall. It's the prayers of Louisa. 
Remember with John Paul II at the canonization of St. Honorable de Francia, John Paul II said, we're now going to enter a new and divine way of holiness. This is not a saintly way. This is not a good way. This is not a holy way. Most people, when they read the divine will, go say, well, this is saintly. And I, and I understand St. Francis, and I think Louisa should be saying this like St. Francis. No. Louisa is echoing Jesus. And, and this is why the long rounds for the newborn becomes ours. The rapid flights into heaven, the endless strolls in the kingdom of my divine will. See, there's no time or space with the divine will. So our intellect has, we have to begin to think with the mind of Christ. Our memory can't be of me, of you, of your family. Well, I have these degrees and I have these letters behind my name and I, I have, uh, uh, no. Your memory has, what did, how did Jesus live? How did Mary live? The new Adam and the new Eve, our whole focus is on Jesus and Mary. So our memory doesn't become of us. See, like I said yesterday, when, 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 you, when you're really busy and you haven't time to talk, you just say to the other person, well, how are you doing? You don't have to say another word. Their whole life is themselves. Their whole life is their family. Their whole life is their degrees. Their whole life is themselves. And Jesus wants to change that. So our memory has to become of Jesus and Mary. And like it says here, the rapid flight, the endless strolls. When I, when I pray, the one, the one place I like to go is to go to uh, Cana. I like to walk into the village. I like to find their Blessed Mother. I want to see where the apostles are. I want to find Jesus. I want to see that, uh, that, that discussion that Our Lady has with Jesus, shocking Jesus. It's, well, it's not my time, you know? But she is his mother. She knows exactly what is needed. She knows she's getting ready to sacrifice her only son. It's, a, it's go to Golgotha, kneel in front of Jesus. I mean, if, if you can't picture Golgotha, you know, look at the Mel Gibson's movie. Be there with Jesus. Be there, hold him when he's being scourged. Be, be with him as the nails are being driven through his hands and his feet. You have to understand, when people say, well, Louisa didn't eat, drink, or sleep for 60, 70 years, it was painful. She was hungry, but she was obedient. She was thirsty, but she was obedient. She, she was tired, and she was obedient. It's, it's, this, is, this is why when, I think it was a couple weeks ago in the calendar, uh, Louisa said to Jesus, there's not going to be many who's, who are going to live in the divine will. Suffering is needed, and most people don't want to suffer. Most people flee suffering. More, it, what, what did Jesus say two days ago in the calendar? He said, He says, when you mortify yourself of any pleasure, your place in heaven becomes another paradise. I'll have two scoops of ice cream, please. <laughs> See, it's, it's to be attentive. It's to be attentive. How can I help change the face of the earth? It's, it's sacrifice. So here, Jesus is saying this, you know, where are your rapid flights? Where are your endless strolls in the kingdom of my divine will? And then he says, when you do that, I, God, can boast in the triumph, boast in the delighting. I follow my gaze, Jesus says, and all the steps, all the acts of Louisa. She's the one that's living in the divine will. See, he says, All have their ideal, and when they realize it, only then are they content. You talk to people, and it's always questions, doubts, worries, fears. Like I said yesterday, the only one that's going to prevent you from living in the divine will is yourself. Jesus says, I want you to pray the rounds. I don't have time for that. 
Jesus says, I want you to mortify yourself. Eh, not today, maybe tomorrow. See, it's, it's to be content is to be like Louisa. Father Bucci would say, when he would go see Louisa, she was always peaceful. St. Annabel de Francia said, Louisa was more of heaven than of earth. Here she's been in bed for 70 years and her back is solid. It's welded from sitting. She never leaned back on the pillows. When they, they couldn't put her in the coffin, they couldn't bend her back, so they put her in a fiat. <coughs> and when you look at that little coffin, it's got a glass windshield and wheels on it, it looks like. And the guy who made the fiats, he knew, he knew about Louisa. It's, it's a new beginning for humanity. That's what Jesus wants. So the little baby has this ideal to attach himself to the breast of his mama. And when he cries and sobs, as soon as his mama opens her lap to him, the baby stops crying. Baby takes on a smile. Flinging himself, he attaches himself to the breast of his mama and victorious. He suckles and suckles until he is full. And while he is sucking, triumphantly, he takes a sweet sleep. This is, this is what's going to happen when you pray the rounds. You, you, you enter into this, this love of God, this comfort of God, and, and you, you become comfortable. I know a lot of people <clears throat> who say they pray the rosary and they got to get their rosary in before they fall asleep. And it's Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord, sleep outside of Jesus, oh my God, present. And Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord, sleep outside. I got my rosary in. Listen what Jesus says what prayer is. Prayer, he says, is to attach yourself to your mama. Prayer is while you're crying or sobbing to, to be comforted, you, you get a smile on your face, you fling yourself to the breast of your mama, victoriously sucking and until you are full, triumphantly falling asleep. St. Francis says, if you're praying and you're not happy, you're not praying. If you're not filled with joy while you're praying, you are not praying. That's, the, that's what Francis says, St. Francis says. Jesus says, prayer makes you peaceful full of peace, full of Jesus, full of Mary. And he says, so I am. He uses God's name here. After long crying, when I see the lap of a soul who opens the door to me and gives a place to the kingdom of my divine will, my tears stop. Do you see what he's saying about us? God knows what's happening in the world. God knows your family. God knows your neighbors. God knows your life. And he says, when I see the, a soul who opens the doors to me to give a place to the kingdom of my divine will, my tears stop. So what does that mean? Jesus says, as soon as you want the divine will, your heart becomes God's throne. What else is in your heart? What, what, what are your passions? Is it that second scoop of ice cream? What makes your mouth water? Jesus says, mortify yourself. Learn to give that up. Don't satisfy yourself, but satisfy God. And what is satisfying God? When I see a soul who opens the doors to give, me, give the place to the kingdom of my divine will, I stop crying. He says, and I fling myself onto her lap. I attach myself to her and suckling her love. See, Jesus says, I want to be fed by the fiat in you. He says that to Louisa. You're my second mother. He says he wants all of us to give birth to him. Not the way Our Lady did. But he says, I made your senses for God. I want to gaze in your gazing. I want to hear in your hearing. I want to speak in your speaking. I want your heart beating in my heart beating. 
I want you breathing in my breathing. I want to be so one with you that I am there. That's what God's waiting for. That's, that's the divine will. And if the divine will is in your family, looking, Jesus looking at you, Jesus listening to you, you looking at them, Jesus in you looking at your, your family, Jesus speaking in you and speaking in him, not putting them in order, but loving them as Jesus would. He says, how can there be any disorder? I take my sweet sleep and I rest victoriously. And even like a little bird, its ideal is the seed. And when it sees the seed, it beats its wing, it runs, it hurls itself over the seed. Victorious, it grabs the seed with its beak. And triumphant, it continues its flight. So I am. Jesus, Jesus says, look at nature. Look, look at nature. Watch what I'm doing there with the birds, with the babies. I fly and I fly. I go round and round to form the kingdom of my, my will in the soul. Now, this is why God wants the rounds. He said to Adam, I could have put voices on all the leaves on the tree. I could have put voices on all the blades of grass, all the drops of water. He says, but I wanted mankind to be the voice, praising God, loving God, glorifying God, worshiping God. And where is our voice? Well, I, I did this, and my family did this, and we traveled here, and we did this, and we built this house, and we did... Who cares? We have to echo Jesus. I love you, Heavenly Father. I praise you, Heavenly Father. I glorify you, Heavenly Father. You are my life. You're my all. You're... That should be constant to live in the divine will. Never to be, never to be uh, uh, focusing on anything else but the love of God. So Jesus says, I, I use no other food but that which is formed in my kingdom. And when I see the celestial seed, more than a bird, I fly to make it my food. When he sees the fiat in us, he comes and says, yes, feed me. Jesus, God doesn't want to be fed. Oh, really? Look at Nazareth. Look at Bethlehem. Look in the cave. God wants to be held. God wants to be nourished by us because he wants to see in us himself. After this, my sweet Jesus moved to my interior and in all the tenderness he told me, my daughter, tell me what about your ideal. What is your purpose? What is it? That's what Jesus is asking you today. What we read is what God wants us to respond to. When, when I read this, this is what Jesus teaches. When he says, what is your ideal? What is your purpose? I stop everything. And, and I, I listen to what Louisa says, and I, I give my response. What's Louisa's response? My love, Jesus, my ideal is to fulfill your divine will. Is that the first thing that we think of? If not, Jesus is teaching how we're supposed to be. My love, Jesus, my ideal is to fulfill your divine will. And all my purpose is to reach to the point at which no thought, no word, no heartbeat, no work of mine may ever go out of the kingdom of your supreme will. I, I want to dive into this infinite ocean of love and drown. I never want to leave. Even more, it may... It may they be conceived, nourished, and raised to form their life, and if needed, also their death. Though I know that in your divine will, no act dies. But once it is born, it lives eternally. That, that's the prime act of God. That's what God is calling us to. To come, divine will, breathe in my breathing. That breath at that point, in the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, I want to repair every breath. That breath is infinite. A thousand million years from now, you go back to that, Jesus, breathe in my breathing, and that divine I love you is, is in eternity, and it'll never end. Why? Because Jesus is doing that in you. It's not your I love you. 
Human, I love you, Jesus says, is distasteful to him. What is tasteful to him is divine, I love you. It's not just to become saints, to be good and holy and saintly. It's to share in divinity. The divinization is what God is waiting for. Nothing less than that. I mean, it's, it's, it's easier to become a saint than to live in the divine will. To live in the divine will, you have to die to everything. You know what's really funny? As after talks, a lot of times people says, and he said this, and then he said that, and then he said this, and then he did this, and then he, did you know that, da, da, da. It, Jesus, is, Jesus wants us to surrender to him. He's got great plans. But if we're rebellious, we're with, the, we're with the rebellion. Jesus says we have to be of one mind, one heart, one faith. What Jesus says in the writings, read it. I'm not trying to tell you anything different. Read what Jesus says. So he says this, once, once it is born, it lives eternally. Once you do that action, the divine will, it never ends. And he says this, so it is the kingdom of my divine will in my poor soul that I long for. And this is all my ideal. This is what Louisa says, and this is my primary and ultimate purpose. What is your primary and ultimate purpose? Today, what is it? I, what you should be doing is walking on this holy ground, drinking the water that is miraculous, praying for all those that are very, very sick and dying, going to them spiritually and giving them the water that you're drinking. It's, it's God wants healing. I remember I was praying for somebody a few years ago and I pray always, uh, pray this person, phys heal this person physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. And the Lord said to me, pray for divine healing. And I said, what is divine healing? I've never heard of that. Divine healing is to begin to live in the divine will where you are no longer seen. As Father Bucci says, be little insignificant and hidden if you want to live in the divine will. It's not about me, 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 me. It's about how beautiful, how holy, how perfect, how loving our God is. And, and we want to be one with him, fused with him in the holy divine will. So what is your primary and ultimate purpose? God's going to ask you this. He's asking you, and he wants to hear what your primary and ultimate purpose is. And Jesus, all love, making feasts as my daughter, so my ideal and yours are one. We want this. And therefore, one is our purpose. Brava, brava, my, my little daughter, my divine will. Since your ideal and mine are one, you too have sustained the battle of long years, long years to conquer the kingdom of my divine will. It's, how do you conquer the kingdom of the divine will? by dying to all your passions. Some people's passions are, are, are just complaining. And then this, and then that, and then this. And that's got to go. That's not Jesus. Jesus says, if you're worried, fearful, anxious, complaining, negative, you're really anticipating hell. If you're peaceful, joyful, and happy, he says, you're really anticipating heaven because that's where Jesus is filled with peace, joy, and happiness. You too have sustained the long, the battle of the long years to conquer the kingdom of my divine will. When I was 14 years old, I was in the seminary, and the Lord said to me very clearly, I want you to become a saint. My response was, I got my whole life to do that. I don't need to do it now. <laughs> That's stupid. I mean, can you imagine if I had listened? Well, how many years ago was that? If I, if I had listened, I wouldn't have to be going through the trauma and the trial now. It's, it's, you have to die to your ego and your will. That's the why Jesus says, stop saying I, me, and mine. It's, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Mary. It's all about Louisa. That's what God's waiting for. So, Louisa, you had to endure the pains, the privations, 
that have been even a prisoner, even being a prisoner in your little room, bound to your little bed, to conquer that kingdom so much wanted and longed for by me and by you. How are we being bound, not giving life to our human will? Think about it. If you love chocolate, give it up. Oh, no, no, no. I, God wants me to be happy and have chocolate. <laughs> Listen to what he says to Louisa. You're, you were bound to your letter bed. Why? To conquer that kingdom that is so much wanted by me and by you. See, it's, it's not this life. See, we are so blinded. We're born to this light. We're born to this life. We're born to this world. And Jesus says, because your, your father, Adam, and your mother, Eve, sinned. They followed Lucifer. So you, you are following that footstep of Adam and Eve where Lucifer is. He's the prince of this world. And what Jesus is telling us now is the time of that is coming to an end. The 6,000 years is over. He gave him 100 years, you know, for, through Pope Leo XIII. That ended a few years ago. He's panicking. He knows that as you pray your rounds, he's hearing Jesus and Mary's praying and you're praying. He's hearing Adam praying and you're praying before Adam fall, fell. This was gone. And because of Louisa, it's all begun again. He knows his time is over. And he's really afraid. So when people are screaming, going, oh my God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Where are we going to go? Do we have a place to stay? What about... The devil's going, good. They're like me. They're terrified. He's the only one that's terrified. Read sacred scripture. If you need food, you're going to get it. That doesn't mean you don't do anything. But God is going to take care of his little ones. God is going to take care of you. You're not abandoned. And the more time you spend with our Eucharistic Lord, the more time you, you turn to our crucified God, the happier you're going to be. You're going to see. You're going to feel his love for you. But if you're away from him, you'll be screaming like everybody else. You don't want that. The terror, the smell, the rotting of the corpses. You don't want that. That's the devil. Why do you think he's always screaming? He's terrified. He knows where he's going. He's going to death for eternity. Never going to enjoy the beatific vision. See, God is getting everything ready. He's really getting us ready. So it costs much for, to both of us. And now that we are both triumphant, both conquerors, so you too are the little queen of the kingdom of my divine will. Each one of us is supposed to be a king and a queen in paradise to a greater or lesser degree. 30, 60, or 100 fold, whatever you want, you're going to get. And even though you are little, you are always queen because you are the daughter of the great king of our celestial father. Write that on your mirror. You will always be queen in the divine will. Mary is the mother and queen, Theotokos. No one can compare to her. But you are like your mother. You are like the son of God. As much as you want or as little as you want the daughter of the great king, our celestial father. Therefore, as conqueror of a kingdom so great, take possession of all of creation. That's the rounds. And when you pray the rounds, every day God shows you something more beautiful. You remember he said to Louisa, Louisa, what do you see written on the leaves of the tree? She says, oh, I see your I love you and Mary's I love you. Because as, as the new Adam and the new Eve, they recreated everything. He says, where's your I love you, Louisa? She goes, I want that. Instantly, all the trees had I love you from Louisa. That's the divine will. 
If you had to write Olivia with a magic marker on the leaves of the tree, you might be able to finish one tree before you die. But in the divine will, we are one with Jesus, one with Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve. All of redemption, all of heaven, everything is yours because your right of possession extend wherever my divine will reigns as whole and permanent. All, listen to this, everything is waiting for you to give you the honors that befit your victory, which is you become royalty. Adam was naked because he gave up his royal garment. Jesus was naked on the cross to die in his place. This divine royalty that God wants you to possess, again, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. It's not here yet. But when it comes, everyone is going to become Catholic. They're all going to say, what do we need to do to live this life? And the first thing is, you have to be baptized. Everyone's going to be baptized Catholic. That's the first step. Then after that, what do we need to do? And it's going to be, read the book of heaven. Watch what, see at that time, we will have more of aware, awareness, more of an understanding. Right now, it's cloudy. Why? Because it's the language of heaven and we haven't become fluent in it. I, I, I love it when I hear people say, well, Jesus said this. No, he didn't say that. It's, it's it, how are you, see, whoever, see, the interpreter in, in Italy is the traitor. A lot of people have interpreted Luisa not with a Puglian dialect, but with a Roman dialect, and they're not understanding what Jesus is saying. And, and this is why the archbishop said, uh, basically, you got, we, we're going to have a perfect dialect. And when that day comes, that's going to be great. Right now, he says, we're very close to it. He says, we have uh, a, a good translator at this point. This is the vicar general told that to me personally. He says, we have a great person translating. He says, he says this is very, very good. So good things are coming. Good things are going to be amazing. And what does it say? All are waiting for you to give you the honors that this is the divine royalty of God that befit your victory. So you too are the little baby who has so much cried and longed for her Jesus. Have we cried and longed for Jesus to the point that we're at church every day? We love him so much. We don't want to be away from him. But as soon as you have seen me, your tears have stopped. Flinging yourself onto my lap, you've attached yourself to my breast. And victorious, you have suckled my divine will, my divine love. And as though in triumph, you have taken rest in my very arms. If you haven't read Sleeping in the Arms of Jesus, uh, read it. It's, if you can't sleep at night, start reading uh, sleeping in the arms of Jesus. It's divinewealth.org, divinewealth.life. My very arms, and I rocked you so that your sleep may be longer, and, and I might enjoy my newborn in my own arms, and triumphant, I extend the kingdom of my divine will in you, Louisa. Jesus says, everything's done. Now it needs to be known. What is he talking about? What needs to be known? Louisa. She needs to be known. She is the one who accomplished this. And so what does Jesus say to Louisa? I created the universe for you, Louisa, and your children. The new and divine way of holiness is going to shock the world. There's not going to be religious communities. There's, there will be no need for religious communities. Jesus, we're going to have his life. Mary, we're going to have her life reigning in us. We're going to be true children of Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve. So he says this again. I extend the kingdom of my divine will in you. Also, you are the tiny little dove that is going around and around me praying her rounds in, in, in creation, praying her rounds in redemption. This is what we have to become. 
If you're praying your rounds, you have no need to talk. You're, you're falling more and more in love with God. And while I spoke to you about my divine will, manifesting to you in the knowledge is about the divine will, the goods, its prodigies, and even its sorrow, you beat your little wings. He's, he's, how he, he's, he's showing us like we're this hungry bird. He says, uh, and hurling yourself over my many seeds placed before you, you grab them with your beak and triumphant. You are continued, continuing your flight around me. That was great. Whoever did that one, that was good. <laughs> Do that more often. It's just. You continued your flight around me, waiting for more seeds of my will that would place, I, God, would place before you. Everything in our life has been, has been directed by God except for our sin. And even in our sin, he causes us to turn back to him. We're going to praise God and love God and glorify God when we get to heaven for every scar on our body. We're going to say, thank you, Lord. Through, through this difficulty, uh, I, I become more like you. It's, see, the, the world, oh, you can't have an upset stomach. Oh, you can't go through this. You can't go through that. Make you take a pill here. Take a pill there. Mortification is important. It doesn't mean that you, you want pain. But you, 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 you say to the Lord, this is what you've done for me. Can I spend a little time on the cross with you? You come down for a little bit. Let me take your place for just a second. The, the, he's manifesting his, continue, his kingdom to us and he's asking us to continue his life. So my prerogatives are yours, Louisa. My kingdom are yours, Louisa. They are one. They have, we have suffered together and it is right together that e, we enjoy our conquests. But I remain surprised on hearing this and I thought to myself, but is it is really true that my poor soul there is the kingdom of the supreme will. And Jesus told me, my daughter, my celestial mother, was able to give me to others because she conceived me within herself. She raised me, she nourished me, and no one can give something that he does not have. And if she gave me to the other creatures, it was because she possessed me. Now, I would never have told you so much about my divine will had I not wanted to form its kingdom in you, Louisa. You would, have to, uh, you would have to love it so much uh, it had it not been yours. You, nor would you have loved it so much if it had not been yours, which says to us, we love the divine will because God has given it to us. As soon as we say yes, Jesus is in our, our, he's, he's the, in his, in our hearts, he, on his throne in our hearts. But what else is there in that throne? It's all got to be cleaned out. It's all got to be cleaned out. It's, it's clean your room as if you were, you were dead. Clean your heart as if you've already died, that you have nobody but Jesus. That doesn't mean you give up your family, but you have Jesus, Jesus alone. Not for you, not for your profit, not for your gain. Not, it's for Jesus to live in the fullness only happens after you die. That's what Jesus says to Louisa. This fourth stage that people say they're living in. It's very clear if you read the writings, Jesus says that happens the moment you die when you're no longer there reigning in your body. This is great. See, there's three stages, or four stages. The, fourth, the first stage is going outside. No, Saint, the fourth stage is you're inside your house with all the windows closed. That's Protestantism. You love Jesus, but you don't have any, any sight of him. The second stage is Catholic. The windows are open. Oh, you have the sacraments and the sacramentals. Oh, there's a hill over there. There's a valley over there. Oh, if you look out this window, you'll see there's a road that goes that way. The third stage is where we are. We're outside, and Jesus is showing us creation. And then we're learning how to pray the rounds of creation. 
adoring God and loving God and praising God. There's no walls around us. We're beginning to see things very clearly. The fourth stage is you leave earth, you enter into heaven, and you, you, are, you are consumed by the burning furnace of charity. That's, that's, that's what, what's coming. And it's coming real quick. This is why fire is coming from heaven. The first purification was the flood. The second purification was the blood of Jesus, washing the world clean. And the third, the third uh, purification is the fire, symbolized by the sacred heart of Jesus, the immaculate heart of Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve through Louisa. Something magnificent is coming. And it's very close, and God is trying to get us ready. Jesus says very, very clearly. He says, uh, the things are not one's own uh, that are kept reluctantly and cause bother and wait. I see, now that's the other thing too. Who is longing to read every day? If, you're, if you have that longing to re read every day, it's yours. Had you not the springing fount of the kingdom of my divine will within you, you would not have been able to repeat what I have told you, nor put it on paper. Lacking the possession, you would lack the light, the love to manifest it. So if the sun shines in you with its rays, it feeds you with words, knowledges, and how it wants to rain. It is a sign that you possess it. And therefore your task is to make it known. Who are you to make it known to? Your family doesn't want it. Your neighbors don't want it. Your coworkers don't want it. Your parishioners don't want it. Who do you make it known to? Yourself. You have to become, you have to learn each word that Jesus speaks is, is infinite. It's, it, your task is to make it known to yourself, just as the task of the Sovereign Queen was to make me known, to give me for the salvation of all. Volume 19, uh, 6, 26, 26. The operating in universal way is, a, is the divine way. And my celestial mother was able to operate in the ways of her creator because Our Lady possessed the kingdom of our divine will. Now, having operated in our supreme will, Our Lady has the rights of the possession that she formed in our kingdom. Who else can requite her if not the one who lives in the same kingdom? In fact, only in this kingdom is there a universal operation. This universal life is Catholic life. The love that loves everyone, the love that embraces everything, and from which nothing escapes. But you must know who possesses the kingdom of my divine will on earth has the right to universal glory in heaven. This is a natural and simple way. If my divine will embraces everything and involves everyone, so from the one who possesses it comes all goods along with the glory that these goods contain. And while universal glory comes from the Blessed Mother, she also receives it. And do you think it is trivial to possess universal glory, Catholic glory, in the celestial fatherland? Therefore, you must be attentive. See, what being attentive is so essential. If you haven't, there's a book, what we have is called Be Attentive. Read it. What does Jesus mean by be attentive? He says it almost every day when he talks to us. The kingdom of the supreme will is immensely rich, and there are coins that spring forth. So everyone expects something from you. All of the angels, all of the saints expect a duty from each and every one of us. And also my mother wants the return for this universal love, this Catholic love that she has for all generations. And you, in return, are due Catholic glory, universal glory in the celestial fatherland. The exclusive inheritance of one who has possessed the kingdom of my divine will on earth. The exclusive inheritance is ours. By 19, 7, 1, 1926, I was doing my usual acts in the supreme volition, and I thought to myself, how is it possible that among the many saints of the Old Testament who are so distinguished, I mean, distinguished themselves with the power of miracles like a Moses and Elijah and many other prophets, 
among so many saints after coming uh, after the coming of our Lord who have redeemed themselves so marvelously because of their virtues and miracles. None of these has possessed the kingdom of the divine will. None of these have lived in the unity of its life. This is important. A lot of people say, oh, I just love the prayers of St. Teresa of Lisieux. They're beautiful, they're holy, they're saintly, but they're not divine will. The, the, what Jesus is asking us is to make that leap of faith to let go of the saintly good and holy to embrace the divine, to enter into what the priest does every day, a holy mass, that drop of water under the chalice. There's a beautiful books out there, amazing books out there, but Jesus says the only book that will transform a soul is the book of heaven. It seems incredible. <laughs> what a great time. Now, while I was thinking of this, my sweet Jesus came out from within my interior, clasped me to himself, told me, my daughter, yet it is really true that until now, no one has possessed the kingdom of my divine will. No one enjoyed all the fullness of the unity of light that it contains. Had it been so, since the things that interest me the most, that glorifies me the most, that no less uh, shall place all the divine rights in safety, shall complete, listen to this, the work of creation and redemption, which means we haven't seen anything yet. You look at the universe, you know, through a telescope, beautiful. We haven't seen anything, anything yet. We're seeing from a human perspective. Jesus wants us to see from a divine perspective. We have to let go of all the worldly and to embrace the divine. That's why you go to church and fall in love with God. Yes, the building's here, but you're falling in love with our, with our creator. You're, you're entering into his womb to be born again, as Jesus teaches Louisa. He says, the glorifies you those, all the divine rights and safety shall complete the work of creation and redemption. And not only this, but shall bring to the creature the greatest good that can exist in heaven and on earth. That's the book of heaven. Look at this, now that there's music. I would have acted in such a way as to make it known. And just as I have made known the many virtues and the wonders of my saints, I would have made it known to the one who possessed the kingdom of my divine will, listen to this, that I, God, hold so dear so as to transmit it to other souls by imitating the one who possessed it. That's Louisa. What time is it? Somebody, somebody's ringing their bells. So we'll end there. We'll be back as this afternoon at 2 o'clock. We will have the procession. Uh, again, pray, when you're praying the possession, possession in your possession, when you're praying as you walk along, each step, Ask God to heal your, your family. Ask God to heal humanity. Ask God, ask Our Lady, Queen of Peace, to bring peace to the earth. Make everything that you think, say, and do a prayer so that the kingdom can be established on earth as it is in heaven. This is holy ground. Drink the water. Splash the water on you. You have an ache somewhere, put water on it. It's, I, I'm telling you, more miracles than the Lord's in Fatima. God's got great plans, and you're in them. So we'll end with a prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And remember, Jesus is here. Let him speak to each and every one of us. Don't interrupt God speaking to your, your, your neighbor.